A lot of the comments that I received on that video were really hateful. A lot of people were attacking me, asking me why I don't believe in the Bible. Everybody doesn't have the same opinion when it comes to faith. And I wish people would start respecting different people's opinions. Doesn't mean they're an evil person. But there's some people that believe if you don't believe in the Bible, you must be this bad, evil person just because you don't believe the same thing that they believe. I just wish people would start being more open-minded, start thinking outside of the box. Now, the reason why I stopped believing in the Bible is based on science. When you look at science and logic, Everything in the Bible is proven wrong. There's no proof that Adam and Eve ever existed. There's no evidence whatsoever that Adam and Eve ever existed. And there's no proof that the world is 6,000 years old. All the science shows that the world is over 4 billion years old. Videometric dating has never been validated against the absolute known ages of rocks. Let us explain. Consider Mount St. Helens. This volcano erupted in the 1980s, giving scientists the opportunity to date the rocks that were formed from the eruption. The results? Five different ages, all between 350,000 and 2.8 million years old, for rocks that we know were less than 30 years old. There's dinosaur bones, there's DNA, there's fossils to prove that the world is over 4 billion years old. There's never been a radiometric dating analysis that simply produces ages that validate to the known ages of rocks. Just reading the book of Genesis alone, the very first book in the Bible, is just things that make you, or should make you question, you know, what the hell you just read, as far as like, when, uh, in Genesis chapter 6 verse 6 where they say uh, God repented making man and it grieved him at his heart and when I read that I was like hold on I thought he don't make mistakes so clearly right there it's saying that God God himself felt like he made a mistake when he made man on earth but God certainly do make mistakes because I've read the whole the whole book of Genesis so a uh, story in it that didn't sit right with me is when uh, there's one character in the book of Genesis I, I forget his name but his brother died his brother was married to his woman and she was still living so that man was told to uh, have sexual relations with his brother's wife and uh, make a baby and uh, he was given that he was given that order so he goes to have sex with her and Instead of busting a nut inside it, he pulls out and his nut fell on the floor and uh, and God killed him because of that. He got, God killed that man because of that. And when I read that, I was like, whoa, hold on. Like, because he didn't want to make a baby with his dead brother's wife. Like, that, that justifies killing. All the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem. Rachaha Kodash and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this faith, even you few sisters, and shalom to the elect. I want to touch on this video with a couple of Jakes. It's always these Jakes who decided they don't agree with Bible scripture, they don't believe in the Bible. They don't believe Adam existed. Although they never seen Christopher Columbus themselves, although they never seen Antiochus Epiphanes, right? Although they never seen uh, any of the, mem you know, the uh, characters, or let me say, the people of the scriptures. They never seen Ptolemy, but this is all in their history books. It's all in their schools. But for whatever reason, when it comes to Adam, 
in the Messiah, they've never seen him, so there's no evidence, right? And this is the mindset of a carnal nation, a carnal nature of flesh, right? So I want to touch on a couple of scriptures. This is like a twofold video addressing both things that he uh, mentioned, right? Dealing with Genesis, I guess solely in Genesis 6 and, and Genesis 38. Um, let me get a scripture real quick. I didn't even pull this scripture up. Um, but let me get a scripture real quick because these guys, <laughs> okay, uh, westernized, uh, educated, right? They have been westernized by the educational system of the world. Okay? And um, they are lost. And because the Most High set them to be lost. Romans 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Yahweh forbid, yea, let Yahweh be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightiest overcome when thou art judged, are judged. So, when it all boils down with this man that's in the army gear, right, who discredits the situation in Genesis 38, although this same country that this army gear that this man is wearing has went in, raped, robbed, and murdered his own people, right, and still doing it in other countries, as we see the war going on over there in the other uh, so-called holy land, where they kicked thousands of hundreds of thousand people out of their land, right? Along with rape, rob, and murder. But you can clearly see this man will wear the garments of murderers and killers. And they can't understand that this is still all justified by Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord being a man of war. Right? But that's these guys. They can't understand uh, what they've been taught. And this is what Christianity how Christianity has destroyed our people, making them think that God is this loving God that all he does is care and bring you blow pops and lollipops. And he's bringing peace, love, and harmony. That's what these people think. Well, Isaiah 47, 45 and 7 says, I create good and evil. This is the Lord saying that. So anyway, let's dive into Genesis 6 real quick. I, I have no idea. You know, this is why you have to have people break it down to you. Uh, it says, and, and Yahweh, it says, and God, let me say here, the power, saw the, that wickedness was of man great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieved him in his heart. <clears throat> right? So, this man said that the Lord made a mistake when clearly he says he don't make mistakes, which is not true in a sense because the Lord doesn't make mistakes, okay? Now we go to this word repented, right? See, these guys just need an excuse to say what, you know, to believe what they want to believe, but they don't have the spirit. And it's primarily because of these Christians, right? And really when you see this word um, repented, it means <clears throat> to be sorry, right? Be uh, sorry, repent, regret. There's several, so many definitions. To comfort oneself, to comfort, to comfort, to console, right? It actually says here to comfort and console, right? So all these things that the Lord have created he already knew but if you keep reading it says and the Lord would, said I will destroy man who I have created from off the face of the earth both man and beast and creeping things and fowls of the air for it repent of me that I have made them but then it goes on to say <clears throat> Noah's favor in the most high but Noah found grace in, um, in the eyes of the Lord 
These are the generations of Noah, and it goes on to the generations. So now let's go into a little commentary real quick. Real quick. <clears throat> okay, it says, Repented the Lord, Cambridge. We're going to go here. This is a strong instance of what is called anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism, <clears throat> all right? An expression descriptive of human emotion, right? Because that's where we get our emotions from, okay? The Most High is a man of war. You'll see him all through the scripture says it angered the Lord. It made the Lord mad. It made the Lord angry. Why? Because we're all from the Lord. This is how, why this all plays out the way it did with Cain and Abel. With his own son, Yahawashah. Right? With all the kings, uh, Jehoshaphat, um, Jehu, and um, the list goes on of all the kings. Right? Joshua and various other uh, member Moses it says anyway <clears throat> this descriptive human emotion or action as ascribed to Yahweh such expressions have often given rise to superficial criticisms the appreciatory of the Holy Scripture on the part um, on the part both those who are ignorant to oriental literature which Oriental goes back to the Eastern <clears throat> literature, and those who assume that the books of the Holy Scriptures must be free from the literacy characteristics of the writer's age <clears throat> and nationality. In this verse, uh, Jehovah, Yahweh, is represented as intensely grieved at the frustration of his purposes for the human race. The description is given in a childlike simplicity of the language of the earth age okay is asserted that Jehovah is not like man capable of, of repentance there are two representations in holy scriptures of the divine nature one which as here makes the divine purpose fluctuate and reflection and it is where of man changing experiences the other which depicts the divine purpose a uniform Right, changeless and unvariant. So this is all set up for a purpose. Let's go to Numbers 23 and 19. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie. Right? So how is he going to say, how is he going to create all these people, right? All these animals and all these creatures, and then say, I wish I never created them. And if that's what he wanted to do, he could still do that. But it was already written why he created it from the beginning. <clears throat> this whole story basically is to encourage us on repentance. Right? That's why Paul was talking about repent for your sins, your sorrows. That's why Yahweh said, take ye up your cross and follow after me. And Yahweh is in the image of the Most High. Anyway, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of Man that he should repent. He hath said, and shall uh, he not do it, or have he spoken, and it shall not make it good? With a question mark. So at the end of the day, these are examples when you go down to Noah. Um, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So who created Noah? Right? The whole purpose for that was for Noah. And then out of Noah, his sons, you know, after he destroyed the, the earth, you know, then you had Shem, you know, Ham and Japheth, right? And the women. And they brought back the generation. Now when you go back to Romans 9, 9 and 13 it says as it is written Jacob have I loved but Esau have I hated so you can still see, clearly see some form of emotion in there let's go to Isaiah 55 um, and uh, let me go to Isaiah 55 and 8 for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither your ways my ways right so um, anyway this other guy, this other Jake, 
he goes into the fact of uh, Genesis 38. I didn't mean to make this that long. Um, but has he considered what happened in the book of no, uh, uh, Numbers with Moses and Median when he said, take every man that have not laid with, uh, take every woman, every man take a woman that have not laid with man? Has he considered that? Or, or Jephthah, I believe his name was Jephthah, who sacrificed his own daughter. Have he considered that? See, a lot of these people don't understand um, the scriptures. They don't understand uh, it's the way they were taught. So let's go to Genesis 38. I think it's Genesis 38 where this was said. Now, just to summarize this, I believe after Joseph was sold uh, to Egypt, <coughs> we look at Judah, and Judah took his wife Aaron, the firstborn, whose name was Tamar, and Aaron, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. And Judah said unto Onan, uh, Odin, go unto thy brother's wife and marry her and, and raise up thy seed. And Odin knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went unto his brother's wife that he spilled it onto the ground, lest that he should give his seed to his brother. And it displeased the Lord, and the Lord slew him. Right? Now we see the Lord slew many jakes that displeased the Lord for things that we might say uh, is it wasn't righteous well I'm going to say most people would say it wasn't righteous because it's all righteous to the Lord or we might say it's simple like the Ark of the Covenant when the Jake went to grab the Ark and the Lord slew him because he wasn't supposed to grab the Ark right uh, like Saul when he didn't fulfill his purpose <clears throat> and what happened to Saul so I don't think these guys understand the mindset of the Lord and then when you go on down through the story uh, I believe Tamar act as a harlot I believe it was Tamar act as a harlot covered herself um, to uh, the daughter-in-law so he can bring forth the seed in a nutshell you know so I, again I, I just wanted to make a quick video out of this going back to Genesis 6 the Lord doesn't make mistakes right and all these sorrows that you may see in these scriptures is you know the spirit of what we feel the things that we feel uh, you know just like what we did to the Lord when we sinned against the Lord and it angered the Lord there's nothing wrong with that he's your creator but what did he do that it was all for the purpose of his elect of the Israelites because you know what he did he turned our wives into harlots thy daughter shall be harlots thy mother shall be harlots in the streets your son shall fall by the sword so now we feel we understand now so we can understand now the punishment the magnitude of our wickedness so ultimately when this whole story is over and we get to the kingdom right we'll understand and then we'll appreciate right the Lord did all this on purpose that's the bottom line it was for our sakes that's why this is written that's why Romans 15 and 4 says everything are written aforetime time is for our learning today that through patience we'll have faith and hope anyway that's all I have on that Shalom